I posted my latest video on the High Swandle Project channel this morning and it was about my jointer here. And in that video, I said, I've got nothing to prove with this. So I didn't go through the extensive tests that Matthias did when he you know, showed how great his was. But he left me a comment in that video saying, put dial indicators on it and hit it with a hammer. So God damn it, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Dial indicator set up here, uh, base is on the out feed table. I'm just gonna slide it back and forth across the in feed to show how well that's lined up with the out feed. Okay, so as you can see, there's about 10 thousandths in the difference from the side to side, but I measured the cut the jointer was making and it's not that much. The problem I have here with this steel is that it's not flat and it undulates slightly in different places. Part of that is because it wasn't flat to begin with, it's hot roll steel. And part of that is my efforts to make it flat, like pounding on it and whatnot. So this dial indicator is not giving a truly accurate reading of the cut that the jointer will make once the wood is fully supported by the table on both sides, that is. All right, the next thing he had, a mallet. Uh, I'll have to go over and get it. But first, I'm just going to I'm just going to put my weight on the back end of the table here and see how much of a difference that makes. This was tapping hard enough to make a sound, basically, but I'm going to hit a bit harder. I'm not going to put my full swing for the fences type motion and body weight into it, but I'm going to hit it harder than I think he was hitting his. Okay, uh, I think that's it for the abuse. <laughs> if you're doing this to your jointer, you probably don't deserve to have a jointer, actually. Nobody is taking their jointer and jumping on it. Nobody is taking out their wooden mallet and pounding on their jointer. Most people will respect the tools that they have and know that if you abuse them, they will go out of alignment. I mean, I can't take my mallet here and start beating up on my miter saw. It's not going to work the same, of course, because you're abusing it. And that's exactly what I just did with this. Now, take the dial indicator and slide that across and see if there's a big difference. I don't know. If anything, maybe it improved it. <laughs> so if you've got a jointer, get out your mallet and start beating up on it and do a couple of running jumps onto it. Anyway. The final uh, test, I guess you could say, would be to see how it cuts after all that. So I'm going to put the fence back on and I'm going to run that piece of two by stock that I cut in the first video through again and see what happens. Seems to be cutting a little bit deeper than it was before, which is not unexpected, but it's still producing a very straight edge. But I'm going to adjust it because that was the other thing that was an issue. I'm going to adjust it up a little bit to make the cut shallower. Reach in and loosen these two knobs that lock the inclined plane down and then just rotate my handle here. I take a little, it's like those planes they have that little brass mallet with and then you slide along it to see how well it's gonna line up with the blade. So this is more of a hand tool type one so this is you know higher class for sure. And then tighten up my knobs and that's it for the uh, depth of cut adjustment right there. OK, 
okay, working pretty good, I think. And man, that's straight. And of course it's square because my fence is square. That's square to the outfeed table and that hasn't changed because all that's fixed basically. So it seems to be working fine after all that abuse, but uh, easy to adjust. The thing is that it's easy to, to set up too. Even if it did go out of alignment with me jumping on it or pounding on it, it's just to loosen those bolts down there that hold the ramp in place line it up again with the in-feed table clamped up in line with the out-feed table. You do that with a couple of uh, straight pieces like this, just clamp straight down like this, one on either side, clamp there, clamp there. It pulls it up straight in line and then you can adjust from there. So much easier than trying to build that, uh, in my opinion, that more complex mechanism the complex mechanism does work well. That's not what I was saying. I wasn't saying that doesn't work well. But people saying that this doesn't work well is just pure bullshit, basically, because this works awesomely when you consider how little time it would take to build. Yes, Brother Hezekiah was afraid of getting his fingers dirty. Morning! Yeah, I hope you don't mind. I got up a little early, so I took the liberty of milking your cow for you. Yeah, it took a little while to get her warmed up. She sure is a stubborn one. Then pow, all at once. We don't have a cow. We have a bull. 